ready for you, Miss Crawford. To a truly great lady, Miss Joan Crawford. You know what's missing in my life? Come on, you've got everything you want. No, I don't. I want a baby. Out of the question. Don't you dare judge me. We have a moral and legal responsibility. And what you're really doing is denying one of your children the opportunity to live a wonderful and advantaged life. You're a lucky little girl. And very expensive. You trust me a lot of favors. Christina, darling, I'm going to make a perfect life for you. Are you having a happy birthday, Christina, darling? This is the best party I ever had. I love you, Mommy dears. I love you, Tina, darling. You lost again. It's not fair. You're bigger than I am. Ah, but nobody ever said life was fair, Tina. I will always beat you. Then I'm not going to play with you anymore. Ever. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to march yourself upstairs to your room and we'll stay there. No, I won't. Yes, you will. No! Sorry, Mommy. Dearest. You are not getting up from this table until you have finished that meat. Have I ever lied to you in your whole career? Or given you one piece of bad advice? Your treatment of me has been divine. Good. I want you to leave Metro. My wonderful fans. Leave Metro. Your pictures, one after another, are losing money. You have made me a star. Theater owners voted you box office poison. Making fun of me? I pay. Truth is, you're getting old. You're nothing but a rotten, crooked lawyer. The biggest female star he's got. Look at this floor. Do you think it's clean? Look at this floor. You and me together. Screw up. Look at that. Nothing is clean. Oh, look at that. It was why I had us doing in this closet what I told you. No. Yes, Mommy dearest. When I asked you to call me that, I wanted you to mean it. Joan Crawford, the most dramatic role of her life, was her life. Frank Kevlons presents Faye Dunaway as Joan Crawford in Mommy Dearest. Let me get my glasses on. Yeah. Let's say happy holidays to everyone to start off. Yes. Happy holidays and thanks for coming by. Thank you. Did you hear that? Happy holidays and thanks for coming by, guys <laughs> and ladies. Welcome to Midnight Classic Cinema at the Cinema Village. Yes. And I'm your host, Barry Z, from the world famous The Barry Z Show. I hope you all watch it. Thank you. And tonight, my special guest... My special, special, special guest of all time is Carol Ann from Mommy Dearest, the classic movie that we're going to screen for you today. Wow, you're really Carol Ann, aren't you? Uh, or as, I, as you say, Carol Ann! You mean, Carol Ann! <laughs> right, that, is that that's good? Be that's better. <laughs> and you're from that great classic movie, Mommy Dearest. Mommy Dearest. Which is what we're going to screen tonight. Yeah. And your real name is Ritanya Alda. Yes. Any relation to Alan Alda? No, I'm not related to Alan, but I know Alan, and he's a lovely, lovely man. He came to see me in a show I did a couple of years ago. What show? Called um, Murder at Howard Johnson's. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> laughing. It's a call. It was a comedy. It is a comedy. So he was very supportive and wonderful. And, oh, nice. Was it here in New York? Yeah, it was at the Theater Row on Theater Row. Now, you live in New York, don't you? I am a New Yorker. How did you end up in this film? Um, 
Frankie Blondes uh, was the producer of this film, and he was the president of Sigma 3, which was a small distribution company and that did the early Brian De Palma films that I starred in with uh, Bobby De Niro called Greetings and Hi Mom. Greetings you were in, Hi Mom? Yes, yes. Wow, did anyone ever see those movies? Hi Mom. Classic, Classic cult movies. Classic wow. cult movies. And Frank distributed them, and then I did The Fury with Brian that Frank produced, and so Frank recommended, Frank Yablons recommended me Frank Perry. Wow. That's how it came to be That's seen. how it came about, huh? Yeah. Now, you also wrote a book, right? Called The Carol Ann Diaries? No, it's The Mommy Dearest Diary, Carol Ann Tells All. The Carol Ann uh, but it's a mommy diary, dearest, it's really? a mommy dearest diary. Okay, so it's it, not a Carol Ann diary, well, it's it, a mommy dearest diary. Yes, because it, it's a whole bunch of cast of characters, not just Carol Ann, but it, it's everybody that worked on the movie, essentially, because wow. it becomes a family, and then you get to know the makeup person, you get to know the hair person, you get to know the cinematographer, you get to know other people that have a lot to say about the <laughs> they, <laughs> Now, they the mommy right. dearest diary is for sale right here in the lobby tonight. Yes. Tell me about the book. What is it about? Uh, the of course, book, about the movie. The book is about the book is a three part uh, three parter. The first part introduces me, who who was I before I was Carol Ann, and it's a, a, a little bit of a biography about my life, how I came to America, how I from wanted, where from from Latvia, from Riga. Really, you sound yes. like you're from Brooklyn. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did a part for, in uh, Last Exit to Brooklyn where I played our Brooklyn mom. It was fun. Wow. Um, and so I came and how I wound up in New York studying acting and how I got into the business and sort of uh, my life in the 70s in the film industry in New York were all these wonderful directors that I worked with. And then that's the first part. So the second part is the actual diary, which I actually kept. I kept a day-to-day -day journal of the, the four months I was on Why? this film. I uh, kept the journal because at the time my personal life was chao chaotic because my husband was having uh, drug issues. And Is he still alive? No, he, he, uh, uh, he got killed uh, crossing the street in New York in 2006. Well, I'm sorry. So, was he a famous actor? Yes, his name was Richard Bright and he was a wonderful actor. Oh. He did all the Three Godfathers and many, many more movies. He played Al Neary in The Godfather. You were in The Godfather too, weren't you? I was not. I oh, was you were Richard not. Was. I would love to have been in The Godfather, but I wasn't. So you were in The Godmother then? <laughs> the God, the God <laughs> sister. <laughs> uh, so then, um, so I kept, because it was so difficult in my personal life and it was so difficult on set with Faye that uh, the only way I could deal with it was to journal. And I've never journaled before and I never journaled after. So I journaled the day to day and it kind of made me more peaceful. Things kind of, I kind of put things in perspective as I journaled. So then I put the diary away. I never intended to publish it. I, I, I never thought, I, who knew that this movie would become the cult classic movie of our time? Of all time. Of all time. So uh, so then when I realized that there was a demand for people wanted to know what happened because there nobody Faye Dunaway doesn't talk about it. And uh, yeah, no, I asked a question once. I interviewed her at the premiere of a play uh, off Broadway and I said to her, Faye, you must have some favorite lines from this classic movie that you were in called Mommy Dearest. She goes, just like this, she goes, I don't have any. <laughs> yes. And that was it. That was the end of that interview. <laughs> yeah, it's true. She she refused to talk about it. Why? But, uh, I don't know. She's right now. She called me a few months ago. She's writing her book on Mommy Dearest because she found out I was writing mine, and she wanted me to help her. She wanted me to fly out and help her write her book <laughs> with her ghostwriter for no money, of course. And, Hello, um, Faye. Yeah. <laughs> and knock, so, knock. <laughs> so I said, well, why don't you just buy my book and you'll get a outline of what happened. Because honestly, <laughs> if I hadn't journaled it, I, I, I wouldn't remember the details that I put into this book. So let's see what she uses. Unbelievable. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> and she didn't want to pay you anything nothing, to be a contributor. Nothing, nothing. Now, you... And, and I would get a little uh, note. I didn't do it. I would get a little note somewhere. She didn't in the do it. No, no right. I didn't do it. And she's on her, I think, fifth or sixth ghostwriter now. So. Oh my God! <laughs> what happened? I have no idea. They all I don't want to, They all. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's magic. Now, in the movie, you sort of age in it and become older than her, yes. but in reality, you're younger than her. 
I, I was younger than her, and on our first uh, uh, few days on the set, Frank Perry came in and said, well, Tanya, you're looking too good uh, to the makeup person, and got to take it down a little bit. I came in a second time, no, you're still looking too good, you're going to take it down a little bit. Third time, which Tanya, if you look this good, Faye is going to have you fired and there's nothing I can do about it. Wow. And so I said to Charlie Shram, the makeup man, Charlie, please, I don't want to get fired, just make me look good. She had made these appliances for the old age, she put a little fake nose on, elongated my nose, a fake tip rather. And made me really sallow, you sallow makeup, you know, and the whole thing and the hair was really, you know, patted down. So you're telling us that Faye Dunaway was the real mommy dearest? Well, <laughs> yes, yeah, sort of. Wow. <laughs> she told everybody what to do. So, including, wow. including the director. Unbelievable. Yeah. Now, we also know you from a movie I screened in the series here, the classic movie series, called Rosemary's Baby. Yes. What role did you play in that? Well, I was, I actually have a little part in it called Dr. Hill's Answering Service Operator when, when, uh... You were Dr. Hill's the Answering, answering Service? Service Operator. But I was on movie for six weeks not playing that part. I was Mia Farrow's photo double stand-in. So when you see the, like, for example, the opening shot when you see the two people, Mia and the other person walking by the Dakota, that's really me walking. Wow. With the other stand-ins, so all the long shots are me, and um, and the back shots. Some of the back shots are me. And you were also in a movie called The Amityville Possession, right? Amityville Two: The Possession. The Possession. And my camera person right here has two kids that were in it. Erica and Brent, right. uh, and they they play the two little kids, <laughs> and Magda was the mother. She was on set with them because they were a five or seven or. Oh, how old uh, let's see, it's seven and ten. Seven and ten. And this happened by accident, right? By accident. I just, I hadn't seen Magda in all these years, and there she is. You know, I was really And Fred was also in Last Exit to Brooklyn. Wow. Oh, oh my I God. Didn't know the, at that. the end, you'll oh, see. Yeah. He's wow. that little boy that oh, little was about to be. Talk about parallels. Yeah. Wow. 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 Tell me about the movie for people who haven't seen Mommy Dearest. And why is it called Mommy Dearest? Uh, it's based on Christina Crawford's book called Mommy Dearest. I, I think actually mainly the title and some of the some of the things in it, it's the screenplay is really mm. its own story. Because I think the screenplay focuses the movie focuses much more on Joan Crawford. I think they made it sort of like a Joan Crawford story. Uh, the mm. book was more from Christina's point of view. And uh, Christina actually and David Kuntz, her husband, who was one of the producers, actually wrote their own uh, version of, this, of the screenplay, which was never, as soon as Frank and Frank saw it, they said, no, this isn't what we want. So Frank and Frank rewrote it with two other, uh, wow. two other writers. Unbelievable. And it, it's a story of the great Joan Crawford. And it really, I think this movie really revived Joan Crawford's career after, after she was dead because all of a sudden people are interested in her movies. And there, she's developed such a following from this movie. Unbelievable. It, it's really unbelievable. And you played Carol Ann. Tell me about Carol Ann. Carol Ann the babysitter, is, right? Carol Ann is her secretary, companion, caregiver, child care, caregiver. Uh, the, the scene that they cut out, unfortunately, is how Carol Ann, how Joan Crawford hires Carol Ann. And I think that's important because that, that's my one young scene, by the way. Where, where how did she hire you? Uh, Was I, there a casting couch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm her super fan that, that is at every, when she comes out of MGM, I'm always there, we're autographed with other fans, and mm. she gets to know me over the months, and she says, Carol Ann, are you still here? Uh, mm. and, and I say, yes, Miss Crawford, you know, I'll always be here for you, and I'll always, you know, and she says, get in the car, um, get in the car, I'm taking you home, you come and work for me, and, wow. she, and Carol Ann is thrilled, because Carol Ann is like the ultimate fan who really loves Joan Crawford, and that's why she puts up with everything. Unbelievable. Yeah. What was your salary? In my <laughs> really? No, you the salary, <laughs> not for doing the movie, but the salary that Joan paid you. I, you know, I have no idea, I, but I think Joan was fair because I read, I met the real Betty Barker uh, after the movie, and, and, and she was uh, very well provided for, including, I think she got $75,000 from the will. 
Really? Yeah. Joan was very generous to the people that she was around. She, so your she, character was based upon a true-to-life person. Uh, Betty Barker worked for Carol Ann, for, uh, for Joan Crawford, for 25 years. Although wow. they did uh, probably juxtapose, juxtapose, what position. That word, position, other wow. people in the thing. But but Betty Barker, who I met, was uh, was her, was her employee and uh, and really was one of the people in her will. So that's the reason why you had to write this book, this tell-all book, right? Well, I wanted. You know what? The reason I decided to write it is because people really wanted to know, and what the experience was working on the film. So I thought, well, okay, I'm ready. It's 30 years later. I'm I'm ready to write it, and and uh, so it is what it is. I mean, what I put in is how I felt and what was what happened and how I observed it. Did Faye Dunaway actually become Joan Crawford? No. <laughs> no, and it, here, I'll tell you why. Joan Crawford, two of the people that worked on the film, Charlie Schramm, the makeup person, and Vivian Walker, the hair person, had actually done like four or five movies with the real Joan Crawford. And they came out of retirement, including wow. Irene Sheriff, the costume designer, came out of retirement, who was a five-time Academy Award winner, came out of retirement to do this movie. And so from them, this is what I journal in the film, from them... On their conversation, the real Joan Crawford was gracious on set, because that's where they knew her. Was gracious, kind, knew everybody's name when she went in, uh, sent everybody birthday cards. Everybody got a gift that worked Whoa. on the film. She was very generous and kind. So when 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 uh, when on the set when somebody said uh, Faye is ch channeling Joan, Vivian Walker said, "No, darling. If she was channeling Joan, she would be gracious and kind to us." <laughs> uh, so and and it's true because wow. she, she was known to be really 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 kind. She was, huh? Yeah, on the set. So yeah. why do they paint her in this ugly portrait? Well, I think you know. It, it, it's almost two lives, and I, my justification for it was this: There's a lot of she was under a lot of pressure. War, um, MJ had dropped her. Warner's. I think I think this happens to other people, not just net show people. But you're you're good at work. You're responsible at work. You're kind at work, and then you have all this frustration build up, all the stuff, all the fear, and you come and you take it out on people, in your in your husband, your wife, your kids. That's where you vent. Uh, I think you don't, like with Joan, she was so professional, she didn't vent on the set, but when she came home and she was going, she'd been dropped from MGM, which is one of the scenes in the film, and mm. she's so upset because she thinks her career is over. I think I think the children were the, were in the way of the target, and the children got the brunt of her frustration. That's my uh, understanding, talking to Christina and everybody. On your mark, it's set, and go! ever said that life was fair, Tina. I'm bigger and I'm faster. I will always beat you. Then I'm not going to play with you anymore. Ever! Don't you ever use that tone of voice with me, Missy. Who do you think you're talking to? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to march yourself upstairs to your room and you will stay there until I tell you to come out. No, I won't. No, you won't. Yes, you will. Ow! Ow! You will go I won't go. All right, all right. I won't go. You will stay in I here won't. until you no, are I ready won't. to behave. treated by any stranger on the street because I am not one of your fans <laughs> Everything! 
trying to sweep the poor little widow under the carpet? Well, think again. I'm on the board of directors of this lousy company. Well, we assumed that with your husband gone, you would no longer want to be on the board. Al and I helped build Pepsi to what it is today. I intend to stay with it. We appreciate your devotion and contribution, Miss Crawford. But we have retired you from the board of directors. You drove Al Steele to his grave, and now you're trying to stab me in the back? Forget it! I fought worse monsters than you for years in Hollywood. I know how to win the hard way. Miss Crawford, we don't want any hard feelings. You don't know what hard feelings are. I come out publicly against your product, and you'll see how much you sell. Please, Miss Crawford. It's hardly necessary to make threats you surely don't mean. Don't fuck with me, fellas! This ain't my first time at the rodeo. You forget the press I delivered to Pepsi was my power. I can use it any way I want. It's a sword. Cuts. What do you think you're doing? Nothing, Mommy. I was just, just playing. What do you mean, playing? Pawing through my things? Making fun of me? I wasn't making fun of you. I was just trying to... I was acting. Play acting, like you're always doing. Look at yourself. Look at that. Ow! Oh, what have you done to you? Tina, what have you put on you? What have you done to this damn... Tell me, don't. Oh, no. <laughs> Mommy, I look awful. Yeah, I know you look <laughs> awful. You be quiet. You're always rummaging through my drawers, trying to find a way to make people look at you. Why are you always looking at yourself in the mirror? Why are you doing that? Tell me. You sit still now. This ought to teach you. You're vain, Mommy, I spoiled. Like I'd rather you go bald to school than looking like a tramp. when I told you no wire hangers ever! I work and work till I'm half dead and I hear people saying she's getting old. And what do I get? A daughter! Who cares as much about the beautiful dresses I give her as she cares about me! What's why are hangers doing in this closet? Answer me! I bought... We're ready for you, Miss Crawford. to a truly great lady, Miss Joan Crawford. You know what's missing in my life? Come on, you've got everything you want. No, I don't. I want a baby. 
out of the question. Don't you dare judge me. We have a moral and legal responsibility. And what you're really doing is denying one of your children the opportunity to live a wonderful and advantaged life. You're a lucky little girl and very expensive. You cost me a lot of favors. Christina, darling, I'm going to make a perfect life for you. Are you having a happy birthday, Christina, darling? This is the best party I ever had. I love you, Mommy dearest. I love you, Tina, darling. You lost again. It's not fair. You're bigger than I am. Ah, but nobody ever said life was fair, Tina. I will always beat you. And I'm not going to play with you anymore. Ever. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to march yourself upstairs to your room and we'll stay there. No, I won't. Yes, you will. No! Sorry, Mommy. Dearest. You are not getting up from this table until you have finished that meat. Have I ever lied to you in your whole career? Or given you one piece of bad advice? Your treatment of me has been divine. Good. I want you to leave Metro. My wonderful fans. Leave Metro. Your pictures, one after another, are losing money. You have made me a star. Theater owners voted you box office poison. Making fun of me? I pay. Truth is, you're getting old. You're nothing but a rotten, crooked lawyer. The biggest female star he's got. Look at this floor. Do you think it's clean? Look at this floor. You and me together. Screw up. Look at the key. Nothing is clean. Oh, blame the love. What's why I had us doing in this closet when I told you? No. Yes, Mommy, dearest. When I asked you to call me that, I wanted you to mean it. Joan Crawford. The most dramatic role of her life was her life. Frank Kevlons presents Faye Dunaway as Joan Crawford in Mommy, Dearest. How did she get the name Mommy Dearest? Uh, because that's what she liked to be called. <laughs> mommy, called Mommy, Mommy Dearest. Wow. Uh, we're going to ask a couple more questions and then go to you guys. I'm sure you have questions. Uh, when I interviewed Christina Crawford a couple of years back, because they were, I think, celebrating the, is it the 50th anniversary of the showing of this movie? It's not uh, 50. It was, it was, Maybe it was 25. released in 81. So it can't be 50 years. No, not yet. 35. How many years? About 34. 34 years, okay. I know I was married. Somebody's good at marriage. Ah, <laughs> you were married to who? Christina Crawford? No. No, no. Somebody else. Okay, oh, anyway. No. So when I interviewed Christina, so this was maybe the 25th anniversary yeah, at Town that Hall. Right. Yeah, that's 25th at Town the Hall. The 25th right, right. Uh, anniversary yeah, right. of the movie at Town Hall. Um, I said to her, tell me about these lines in the movie. Are they true? Are they honest? Uh, are they uh, accurate? And she said, no, uh, they embellished it. Well, Did they embellish it as far as the lines go? The only one that really knows is Christina. I mean, I, all I can say is they, they did discard Christina and David's script and they oh. rewrote it. So uh, I'm sure there are lines. Well, let me tell you about these lines, Frank. and I'm sure our audience <laughs> know these lines too. I'm not mad at you, I'm mad at, at the, the dirt. dirt. Uh, it's a classic line. I mean, it's, I mean, is people, that a true line? I don't know. Uh, uh, is that what she actually said? I have no idea. Okay, how about this one? You know where the boys and the booze is. 
That's probably a true line, I think, I would think. I Did Christina know. know about that? No. Where the booze and the boys were? <laughs> well, I mean, she was 16. What are you, I was just thinking if I'm a teenager or 16, 17, I would know. And she got thrown out of that school for the boys <laughs> and the booze, no? For, but that was a very innocent thing. It was like they were just necking. Oh, they were just necking, right, guys? Yeah. That's innocent, what it looked like, right? But children were all adopted. Yes. Okay, how about this line? Don't fuck with me, fellas! <laughs> yes, this isn't my first time at the rodeo. I think she said it. She kept huh. her position at Pepsi when they were going to dismiss her. Now, who and said that? Joan Crawford? Joan Crawford or Faye Dunaway? That, Joan Crawford said that uh, on the Pepsi board when they after her husband... Alice why don't you died. say that line? Uh-huh. Yeah, why, why don't it come from Carol Ann? Oh, I don't know if I can, Carol Ann can say that. Don't <laughs> fuck with me, fellas! This isn't my first time at the rodeo. Yeah! <laughs> Let's hear it for Carol Ann. She did say it, huh? Yeah, she did say it. And, In the and movie she, and outside the uh, movie, yeah, right? Yeah, because she was, she was tough. She kept her position on... She was, She did not... Well, Joan Crawford did not want to be dumped because she had no other source of income at that time. It was just working for Pepsi. And when Al Steele died, she, was, she, was, she would have been penniless. So she did not want to be wow. dumped from that board. And so she went to that board. And who knows? But you know what? They didn't, they wound up not dumping her. They did not they dump did her. They did not dump her. So these lines could have been true. Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe they are true. I think that is a true line. How about this one? I'm bigger and stronger than you, and I'll win every time. Remember well, that? That's a good line. <laughs> Do you I remember mean, that line, guys? Uh -huh. Yeah. I think it's a good line. I mean, when I, she was teaching her to swim, swim or something, right? right? And, and she, wouldn't let, she wouldn't let her win. I'm bigger, I'm faster, I will always beat you. Oh, thank there you. There you go. Thank wow. you. That's... Let's hear it for him. Wow. How about this one? Uh, let's see. Take that dress off because the stain will show. Remember that one? I think that could be true because Joan was very meticulous. And she, she was totally meticulous about how she looked and how the kids looked. And if you see the photos of the kids, they always look really well groomed. I mean, they look... Meticulous. Well, it was just a stain, a coffee stain, or no, well, she wasn't drinking coffee. It <laughs> was uh, maybe grass, an ice cream, a grass, grass stain. stain. Uh, yeah. yeah. She made a whole big thing about that, remember? Yeah, yeah that could Unbelievable. Be, that Take that dress off. Uh, of course, that stain will show. Yes, yes. I think, I think that's a Joan one. What about this one? Your dolls are uncaring and thoughtless, and that's why I gave them away. Remember that one? Yeah, I, you know what? She was only allowed to keep one present, so mm, she had more than one doll. They were, she, she didn't want me to She make gave her money. dolls away because they woke her up. Yeah, that's right. Or the she, dolls woke her up. Um, yes. They woke Joan up, no? Yeah, they woke Joan up. Unbelievable. How about this one? One of my favorites. If mommy doesn't like you, she can make you disappear. That's Christina's line. I know. Yeah. Right? Remember that line? Yeah. Well, you'll see it again. Yeah. And you'll remember it. So tell me about that one. Uh, well, I, I think from Christina's point of view, that could be a, uh, that could be her line. I see. I think so. And what I about? Mean, I think that's a part of it. her book is that uh, that they they're powerless and I mean, they're kind of you know they they really feel their powerlessness as little kids. Wow. And she was at the age of what? Seven or eight or? About eight. Eight wow. or nine. Yeah. You should know. You were the babysitter. <laughs> Yeah. Well, did you Mar spank Christina? Mara Hubble was eight, going on nine. Did so. you spank the kids in the movie? I would never spank the kids. Why not? Because I'm Carol Ann. Oh. I would never touch the I children. I see. What about this line? No more wire hangers ever. Oh. Yes, no more. And then when I was staying in Christina's house and taking care of the animals while she and David were gone, I had to do this. I didn't. I've never done this. I'm really, really good about not doing this. But I had to go in Christina's bedroom and look in her closet. And <laughs> it was all wire hangers. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Who put the dresses in wire hangers? All the dry cleaners do. Oh, my God. The dry cleaners. So she never took them off the wire hangers. They were all the dry cleaner things. And what did Christina know about wire hangers anyway? Uh, well, Joan didn't like them. Joan did not like wire hangers. She wanted everything on those little, uh, either the, uh, the, 
the satin hangers, the ones that had the little satin things, so everything was soft and nice. How could Faye Dunaway tell me that there was no favorite lines for her in the movie? Well, she's disowned the movie. She's disowned it. She won't talk about it. She's disowned it. She 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 hangs up on people. She walks out of one reporter in England when he brought it out up. So, uh, but now she's writing a book. Mm. <laughs> what did it do to the career of Joan Crawford, or the remembrance of her career? It really it really made it re energized, revitalized Joan Crawford's career. People that didn't know Joan Crawford had never, had kind of heard about Joan Crawford, now know a lot of her movies, know the movies, see the movies, the movies are, re are revived. I have a lot of fans on Facebook, and they all know more about Joan Crawford now than anybody. But didn't it put her in a bad light? Well... She was box office poison! Yeah, but she's bigger than ever. This woman is, Joan Crawford is bigger than ever. Wow, it's amazing. Do any of you have any questions for uh, Rutanya? I do actually have one. Um, it's Rutanya, right? Yes, 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 yes. About Betty Barker? Yes. So how, like, did, did you work pretty closely with her to, um, to establish the relationship that, uh, that Carol Ann has with Joan? No, Betty Barker would not talk about Joan at all. And you can now see... Now tell everyone who Betty Barker Betty was Betty Barker was Joan Crawford's real secretary for 25 years. And Betty Barker was a very elegant woman, very elegant looking woman, very attractive. Like who, you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so she she, did, she wasn't dowdy and mousy, uh, like I was made to be. She was very... But she was... you you Whatever secrets she had were not going to be revealed to anybody. She oh. was the true secretary. So she kept whatever. But she was very gracious and nice to me, very polite. And she said, it's lovely to meet you and, you know, all of that. But oh, Betty Barker. Betty Barker. Is she still alive? No, she's dead now. She died, I think, about four or five years ago. Tell me about that scene at the coffee table when Joan Crawford, or Faye Dunaway, was choking little Christina. And knocked her to the floor. Oh, you mean the bigger Christina? The, yeah, and who the was Diane, the gossip Diane, columnist? Oh, oh, oh that, was, that was actually Marlon Brando's sister who was a lovely woman, Jocelyn Brando. Uh, she was uh, played a, a columnist from Red Book. Wow. Uh, that, that was actually uh, supposedly based on a real event. She could have killed her, no? Uh, well, no, kids don't kill that easily if you push them over the coffee table. You're going to hurt them really bad. But the though. glass broke yeah. on the coffee table, no? That, that was, it cracked. Oh, God. But those are two step women that did that. Wow. Anybody else have any other questions? Go ahead. How come I never interviewed Kathy? I'm sorry, can you stand up and just yell it to her? How come Catherine was never interviewed for the movie? How was... Catherine? How come Catherine was never interviewed? Oh, how come Catherine was never interviewed? You mean the two, the two younger kids, you mean? Yes, indeed. I, well, they weren't in the movie. I know. Uh, they, you know what, I figured... You mean they were more kids than... There, there than, were, uh, uh, there uh, were Chris... two new ones adopted. When Wait Christina... a minute, there was... Uh, uh, Christine, Christina, right? Christine and Christopher, and Christopher. were the first to adopt it. And, and then she had two more? That's yeah, a great question. She had two more after the kids were, uh, Christine and Crawford were already about 10 or 11. And why weren't they in the movie? I have no idea. But, well, first of all, you, it wasn't about them. It was This was called Mommy Dearest by Christina Crawford. So this was her story, not Kathy and the other girl's story. They, they have to do their own story. They were twins. They were twins. Well, they weren't really... Who was really, twins? They weren't the two really girls were twins. twins. They were not twins. And they, they had a good relationship with twins. her. Wait a minute, who, who, was, who was twins? The two they younger girls. The two, the two young girls. The new, but, 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 the new but they group weren't of really girls. twins. They were just passed off as twins. Oh, the new group of adoptees. Yeah, she had four adoptees. She had four adoptees. altogether. But their Which, memory of, her, of Joan is, is very good, because I know somebody that knows them. And they didn't write a book. They have to write their own book. They have to write their own maybe book. Maybe they'll do Why that. Why were the kids movie? called Christopher and Christine? Mm -hmm. Or Christina and Christopher? I guess she liked those names. The, 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 everything starts with a C. Crawford, Christina. Maybe she liked the way it sounded. Christina Crawford, wow. Christopher Crawford. Anybody else have any other questions? I can't believe you have no questions. For the Carol Ann from the movie. The original. Nobody has any other questions? Go ahead, right there. Go ahead. I guess we've got to see the movie, uh, and then we'll probably have questions. Okay, well, she'll be gone by then. I'll be gone. But she'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. It's from saying what do the Yeah, same we thing. have a quick question. Or I should say a quick couple of questions, which is our trivia 
contest questions because they're going to win free movie tickets. So okay. can I get answers from you guys quickly? Ready? What soda company was Joan Crawford representing? Pepsi. Oh. Pepsi. Who said that? Who said that? Okay. You had your, can you come up and get a free movie ticket for me? Me? Oh. Yeah, you won. Don't you want a free movie ticket? Oh. <laughs> well, it's compliments of Pepsi. Betty Davis got Coca-Cola, like a Coca-Cola machine. Yeah. Was, uh, there were a few yeah, thank you. <laughs> Wait, there's more. There's more questions and more free tickets. Okay, let's see. Um, what year was the movie made? 1981. Okay. This lady right here with the arm. Um, you, you, you won that. I think you were the quickest. Here we go. 1981. Wow. Yes. Thank, Thank you. You've seen this movie before too, right? Let's no, see. We have two more questions. Okay. Is Faye Dunaway writing a book? She said yes, right? And uh, what's the um, title of this new book? Does anyone know? Oh, the suggested title. Mommy Dearest. Who said that? Me. You said Mommy what? Mommy Dearest. Mommy Dearest too. That's close enough. Come up and get a ticket. <laughs> Or Camp Crawford. That's a good one, no? <laughs> Camp Crawford. Here we go. Or don't ever ask me about Mommy Dearest. There we and go. And all you wanted I to know. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, my, my brother went to school with her son. With whose son? John Crawford. With Christopher? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And our last one is, who directed the film? Frank Perry. There we go. Oof. He has a free ticket for you now. Here's the gentleman who arranged all this. This is Howard. Howard, I love you. Let's hear it for Thank Howard. Arranging. He arranged all this. Okay. Howard so Diamond. So we're going to let you all go and see this fantastic classic movie, right? Yes. It's a landmark. It, it, Why? It, it is. Well, I, I can't answer that. There's so many fans that can answer that better than I can. Unbelievable. Yeah. Would you ever think it was going to be this big? Never. I nev never, ever, ever thought it was going to be this big. Wow. It just took a life of its own. The first week after it opened, it just it took a whole other One life. One quick question for you before we go. Do you think that Faye Dunaway, you know, like removes herself from this movie because she's destroying a Hollywood legend and making her box office poison? No, I think Faye got some good reviews and some bad reviews, and I think she wasn't expecting it. She, uh, as I write in my book, uh, when I saw, I did see her after the, the movie in a play. I went to see her to play, and I went backstage, and she expected to get an Oscar nomination for this film. And she didn't get it, and it was trashed, and I think that she just, after that, she just didn't want anything to do with it. It put Joan Crawford in a bad light anyway, right? Well, I mean, I Joan became I, box yeah, office poison, though. Know? I don't think she was well worried about Joan Crawford. I think she, she was just upset that it didn't go the way she thought. It, it didn't get any nominations or any awards, no. right? and it didn't get any nominations. And it was too bad because, really, the set design should have gotten a nomination and the costume should get a nomination. I think at that time, because this was the first tell-all book, uh, and, and was, people were still in the industry that had worked with Joan and loved her, I think they just blackball the whole thing because I think Irene Sheriff should have gotten another nomination and I think the set designer should have too. I mean, he made a fantastic the set design on this film is an impeccable. You met uh, the real Christina Crawford, right? Yes, I know her. Was she nice? Very nice. <coughs> I mean, I met her after the movie. I didn't meet her before the movie because she was never on the set. But I got to be friends with her and David Koontz, her husband, her then wow. husband. I got to be and was she happy with the film? No. No. No, she Why wasn't not? happy. Because she felt the film was not her book. The film was a story in its own right. And it had those lines, those classic uh, lines. Yeah, and, but she felt, she just, she felt, she said that that's not her book, and it just, it's just a movie on its own. It was embellished, as Christina Crawford yeah, said to me. Yeah, exactly. Any other questions before we go and nope. go see the life of Joan Crawford on screen right now? Okay, well, let's take a minute just to thank Lutania Alder. Thank you. I want to thank you guys for coming here. And if you want to come back tomorrow night, we'll be here again for you and screen this classic movie. Thanks Two again. In a row. Thank and happy you. holidays. Thank you. thank you. And watch this on the Barry Z Show. It'll be on YouTube, Ustream, and on Time Warner. Great. And Fire. Oh, it's wonderful. Let's uh, roll. The
ready for you, Miss Crawford. To a truly great lady, Miss Joan Crawford. You know what's missing in my life? Come on, you've got everything you want. No, I don't. I want a baby. Out of the question. Don't you dare judge me. We have a moral and legal responsibility. And what you're really doing is denying one of your children the opportunity to live a wonderful and advantaged life. You're a lucky little girl. And very expensive. You cost me a lot of favors. Christina, darling, I'm going to make a perfect life for you. Are you having a happy birthday, Christina, darling? This is the best party I ever had. I love you, Mommy dearest. I love you, Tina, darling. You lost again. It's not fair. You're bigger than I am. Ah, but nobody ever said life was fair, Tina. I will always beat you. Then I'm not going to play with you anymore. Ever. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to march yourself upstairs to your room and we'll stay there. No, I won't. Yes, you will. No! You are not getting up from this table until you have finished that meat. Have I ever lied to you in your whole career or given you one piece of bad advice? Your treatment of me has been divine. Good. I want you to leave Metro. My wonderful fans. Leave Metro. Your pictures, one after another, are losing money. You have made me be stuck. Theater owners voted you box office poison. Making fun of me? Mayor should know the price I pay. Truth is, you're getting old. You're nothing but a rotten, crooked lawyer. The biggest female star he's got. Look at this floor. Do you think it's clean? Look at this floor. You and me together. Screw up. Look at that. Nothing is clean. Oh, look at that. What's wire hangers doing in this closet when I told you? No wire hangers ever. Three hundred. Yes, Mommy dearest. When I asked you to call me that, I wanted you to mean it. Joan Crawford, the most dramatic role of her life, was her life. Frank Kevlons presents Faye Dunaway as Joan Crawford in Mommy Dearest. You know what's missing in my life? Come on, you've got everything you want. No, I don't. I want a baby. Out of the question. Don't you dare judge me. We have a moral and legal responsibility. And what you're really doing is denying one of your children the opportunity to live a wonderful and advantaged life. You're a lucky little girl. And very expensive. You cost me a lot of favors. Christina, darling, I'm going to make a perfect life for you. Are you having a happy birthday, Christina, darling? This is the best party I ever had. I love you, Mommy dearest. I love you, Tina, darling. You lost again. It's not fair. You're bigger than I am. Ah, but nobody ever said life was fair, Tina. 
I will always beat you. Then I'm not going to play with you anymore. Ever! I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to march yourself upstairs to your room and we'll stay there. No, I won't. Yes, you will. No! to you in your whole career or given you one piece of bad advice? Your treatment of me has been divine. Good. I want you to leave Metro. My wonderful fans. Leave Metro. Your pictures, one after another, are losing money. You have made me a star. Theater owners voted you box office poison. Making fun of me? I pay. Truth is, you're getting old. You're nothing but a rotten, crooked lawyer. The biggest female star he's got. Look at this floor. Do you think it's clean? Look at this floor. You and me together. Screw up. Look at that. Nothing is clean. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. What's wire hangers doing in this closet when I told you? No wire. $300 dress on a wire hanger. We'll see how many you got in. We're gonna see how many wire hangers you've got in your closet. <laughs> me what? Yes, mommy dearest. When I asked you to call me that, I wanted you to mean it. Joan Crawford, the most dramatic role of her life, was her life. Frank Yablons presents Faye Dunaway as Joan Crawford in Mommy Dearest. On you, Bark. ever said that life was fair, Tina. I'm bigger and I'm faster. I will always beat you. Then I'm not going to play with you anymore. Ever! Don't you... Crawford. To a truly great lady, Miss Joan Crawford. You know what's missing in my life? Come on, you've got everything you want. No, I don't. I want a baby. Out of the question. Don't you dare judge me. We have a moral and legal responsibility. And what you're really doing is denying one of your children the opportunity to live a wonderful and advantaged life. You're a lucky little girl. And very expensive. It cost me a lot of favors. Christina, darling, I'm going to make a perfect life for you. Are you having a happy birthday, Christina, darling? This is the best party I ever had. I love you, Mommy dearest. I love you, Tina, darling. You lost again. It's not fair. You're bigger than I am. Ah, but nobody ever said that life was fair, Tina. I will always beat you. Then I'm not going to play with you anymore. Ever. 
I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to march yourself upstairs to your room and we'll stay there. No, I won't. Yes, you will. No! to you in your whole career or given you one piece of bad advice? Your treatment of me has been divine. Good. I want you to leave Metro. My wonderful friends. Leave Metro. Your pictures, one after another, are losing money. You've made me a star. Theater owners voted you box office poison. Making fun of me? Truth is, you're getting old. You're nothing but a rotten, crooked lawyer. The biggest female star he's got. Look at this floor. Do you think it's clean? You're gonna clean this floor. You and me together. Screw up. Look at the is killing all What's why hangers doing in this closet when I told you no why? Yes, Mommy, dearest. When I asked you to call me that, I wanted you to mean it. Joan Crawford. The most dramatic role of her life was her life. Frank Yablons presents Faye Dunaway as Joan Crawford in Mommy Dearest.